Humans can gauge the environmental condition of an ecosystem by using indicator species. An indicator species is an organism that lives in a very specific set of conditions. For example, the mayfly larva can only live in clean, unpolluted water, whereas other organisms, like the water louse, can survive in water with high levels of pollution. Therefore, if ecologists find a mayfly larva in an aquatic ecosystem, it is an indicator that the water is clean and not polluted. These species are very useful to inform ecologists about the level of toxicity in environments. The distribution of indicator species in an environment can be used to calculate a number called the biotic index. This number is used to inform ecologists of how polluted the area is. A low biotic index indicates that the environment is poor and full of pollutants, where a high biotic index indicates that the water quality is excellent or there is no pollution. Biotic index can be calculated by using this equation. Simply put, you take the total sum of the number of individuals of a species multiplied by their tolerance rating and divide by the total number of organisms that were collected. This will give you a value to compare to the chart. Humans have different ways of helping animals that need assistance to survive. One method is to work with animals in their natural habitat. This is called in situ conservation. As seen in this example, ecologists are working with orangutans in their natural habitat. These species are threatened by habitat loss and hunting. Humans have created conservation efforts in their natural habitat to keep these species from perishing. Another type of conservation is ex situ, which means that organisms are taken out of their natural habitat to be taken care of. Many of these organisms face extinction and are placed in zoos and other locations to breed and increase their population size. The Swiss Rhinoceros Breeding Program does just that with endangered rhinos. Scientists measure biodiversity by two main components, species richness and species evenness. Species richness describes the number of different species in an area. The more species there are, the greater the richness is. And species evenness describes the relative abundance of the different species in an area. As you can see in this example, communities 1 and 2 have the same species richness because they both have four total species within the area but a different species evenness as the first community shows similar abundance between species and the second has a higher percentage of species A and low percentages of the other three. High richness and similar abundance in evenness represents a very diverse ecosystem. Biodiversity in an ecosystem can be affected by many factors. Size, edge effect, reserves, and corridors all impact the biodiversity seen in ecosystems. For size, a larger habitat is better as it supports more species for higher diversity. Additionally, the less edge the ecosystem has, the better for the same reason. If sections of the ecosystem are broken up into smaller parts, higher diversity is supported through closer clusters of the pieces and are even better if they have corridors connecting them so organisms can move from one space to another. A lack of these factors could lead to a decrease in biodiversity.